In many developed countries, inequality has been characterized by stagnation of wages and economic opportunities for the masses. Median income states still, there is a growing underclass. In Singapore, our median income is still rising. Low and middle income families continue to experience real income growth and social mobility. Singaporeans have been enjoying a rising standard of living and are motivated to do well. This is both a result of our culture, who we are, as well as public policies. But transforming from third world to first has created new problems and new forms of inequalities. So first, a rising middle class which aspires to do even better. But material progress is getting increasingly difficult given our high base. Second, some low-income families find it difficult to uplift themselves and stratification risk becoming entrenched. And third, some amongst a higher income segment are becoming socially distant from the rest. And these are our three inequality problems. Some think that universal welfare can be a solution to all these problems. Universal welfare, what does it mean? It means making assistance broadly and easily accessible to not just the lower income, but also the middle income. Proponents argue that with universal welfare, there will be no stigma associated with social assistance, and the dignity of the low income will be preserved. A few countries have implemented universal welfare, but make no mistake, no handout is actually free. Someone has to pay for it. To support universal welfare, taxes need to go up. For these countries, average income tax on a typical worker is about 30%. GST is typically 20 to 25%. In Singapore, half of our population do not pay personal income taxes, and GST is still single digit. If we want universal welfare, taxes on ordinary folks, including the middle income, will have to be much higher. But the greater concern is the impact on motivation. And I noticed yesterday Mr. Pritam Singh also alluded to it and that is a concern that should not be dismissed. So a few weeks ago, in the public dialogue, I called for views and suggestions on how we can better tackle inequality. And I thank everyone who contributed and wrote to me. One young man left a comment on my Facebook page. His name is Chi Kien, and he's now a teacher. His father was a taxi driver, his mother a cleaner. And he said, I quote, I benefited from the meritocratic system in Singapore. I worked hard through the education system to achieve what I am today. However, I noticed that it is getting harder for poorer students to break through the system like the past, as privileged kids garner many advantages since young and stay ahead. We need to bridge the gap between the rich and the underprivileged through education so that more Singaporeans are able to succeed through working hard. This is a young man who clearly empathizes with the challenges of the low income. But his solution was for the system to enable people to help themselves, not welfare. What's the difference? We make help available to them, but we also preserve their motivation so that they continue to strive instead of being passive recipients of welfare. Members of this house have worked with low-income families week in, week out, and you understand their plight. Others outside of this house might have read about them and their plight. But let's not forget the ethnographies of those like Chi Kien, who worked hard and bounced back thanks to the social trampoline we have. The government must continue to extend assistance to the disadvantaged, and it will. But making handouts easy and unconditional is not dignity. Self-reliance is.